going on everybody this is Bronco Juggalo and I'm coming to you with another Wild Eye releasing review. Today we discuss the 2019 film Doll Factory. You don't think this is a bit Shh. much? Dude. Guys look. It's fine there's there's like a whole room full of them over there it's okay. This place must have been a doll factory. Okay in order for this to work everyone has to do exactly what I say. All right. I'll join hands. Jam to be Malan Spiritus. Derek, don't touch that. You like that, you do you? Get the hell out of here! Starting to hit me now. This film was actually filmed in 2014, directed by Stephen Wolf, and starring Justin Herman as Mark, Nicola Elliott as Kay. This follows a group of teens who go to an abandoned doll factory and accidentally bring to life hundreds of killer dolls. They go on a terror killing spree all throughout a Texas town in search of souls for their master. This had a $200,000 budget, and as I said, it was filmed in 2014. It just got its first release through Wild Eye in 2019. You know what, guys? I'm going to start with cons because I only have two. My first con is that they used dialogue to progress the story in places where it did not need to be. They could have done it without the dialogue. They could have done it a little more subtly, and it just kind of bothers me that they kind of forced it when I really didn't think it needed to be forced. For example, let me give you the quote of the super hot chick that's trying to wrangle them all at the party into doing something stupid. Oh my God, why don't we go to the abandoned doll factory and see if we can conjure us up some ghosts? That's an exact quote. I I just, they're like, okay, let's do it. Uh, come on guys, the story could have progressed a little bit more naturally than that. Just my opinion, it could have been done on purpose. Maybe that's what they were going for, because uh, this movie does have a throwback feel to some other films that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. And it happens a couple times during the film. My second con is the CGI blood. There's some great practical effects in this movie, and there's even some other special effects through CGI. But when we get the CGI blood, I find it to be extremely needless and really out of place, and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Just didn't like it at all. Getting into prose, as I said, it reminds you of a certain type of film. It really does kind of harken back to the demonic toys. It also reminds me a little bit of Yoga Hosers and Army of Darkness. But it definitely has that full moon flavor, if you know what I'm saying. Pro here, I don't want to give anything away, but the big bad is not what I expected. For those of you that have seen the movie, you know... When I say Jaeger is not what I expected, Jaeger was not what I expected. But in a good way. I thought that it was done well. I really enjoyed it. This is a horror comedy, guys. And it does the comedy parts very well. It does the horror stuff pretty well, too. It's not very scary, but it is bloody and gory. And it's really well done. Speaking of which, I love the practical uh, gore effects. I think that they're on point. They look really good. And I think they should use that throughout the entire film instead of throwing CGI blood in there at the times that they did. The dialogue is good and the acting is decent. What else can you ask for in a smaller budget film? Now, this isn't a terrifically low budget film. It did have a 200k budget. I mean, that's pretty good for what they did. I haven't spent it all on the uh, t intro title sequence and the outgoing credits because both of those are done really well. And maybe that's where the money went. But hey, you know, who am I to judge? I really enjoy the doll design. I think it's really good. It's really well done. My buddy Jason just reviewed these films, and he said that we have a couple types of dolls here, and we do. We get some, uh, some like, mannequin-style dolls, then we also get some, uh, you know, actual dolls, and then we get some hand puppet-type dolls. But they all look really good, and they all have a really good design. I really enjoy the design. Um, how many designs can you put on a killer doll, really? 
I think they did a really good job making these dolls look creepy and funny at the same time. I love the Ghetto Necronomicon. <laughs> That's what I call it. It's the spell book that the blonde chick whips out at the beginning. It looks like the Necronomicon, just kind of ghetto. And I thought that was really funny. I thought that was a really cool uh, homage, in a way, to Evil Dead. And I think that's kind of what they were going for, too. And there's a few of those homages in this movie. There's a Gremlins homage in the movie. And I thought it was all well done. My final pro, guys, is that this movie is fun and funny. And throughout the whole film, I was never once bored. I was never once waiting for it to be over. And overall, it's just a really enjoyable film. If you like killer doll movies, if you like horror comedy, if you like just having a fun laugh, this is a good movie to do it with. Don't let the low budget fool you. Give it a chance. This is Wild Eyes Doll Factory, and it's a really fun movie. Big props to director Stephen Wolf. That's it for today, guys. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done a Wild Eye review, and that's because I've been really concentrating on this Star Wars stuff. And I really felt that keenly. I thought that I needed to get some Wild Eye in there. Uh, I know that the good folks over at Wild Eye, they put faith in me to do these reviews, and I want to repay that. So even though I'm doing some other stuff for the time being, building up to the new Star Wars film, I still want to make sure that I'm giving them their money's worth. This is Bronco Juggalo saying, peace. <laughs>